So I think the effect on Pay Money Wubby and Penguin Zero, it's called like skill something. Someone can let me know in the comments, but I was watching one of their videos and they were having fun playing. It was Penguin Zero and his friends. Uh, Penguin Zero has, I mean, he has an addiction to cardboard. He did Yu-Gi-Oh! before. He was looking for those Starlight Rares. I remember watching him open so much Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, he did Pokemon. There's a video of him, like, actually leaving his home with some friends to make a shady Pokemon purchase in, like, a parking lot somewhere. I thought that was pretty interesting. So, Magic being the best of the card games, in my opinion, I love Pokemon. But I think Magic, in terms of collectability, it's the oldest card game. A Black Lotus will always be a Black Lotus. You can see the new buy list is 13,200. That's very aggressive. Uh, it's an uh, all-time high, actually. Uh, I think it was sitting at 12,000, and then it hit 12,600, and then the next jump. Yeah, the Black Lotus will be a Black Lotus. You either have one or you don't. Uh, it's one of those cards where there's not much um, there's not much wiggle room when you if you've ever negotiated for a Black Lotus, you're going to see that it, they're really hard to buy, guys. Uh, everyone. There, I mean, people want them for different reasons. For me, I wanted them to have a game store. I thought it would be inappropriate if we didn't have a Black Lotus in the store. Yeah, um, I think in terms of where I see the Black Lotus, it, it's got to be one of the most valuable collectibles just ever, 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 right? And if you can get your whole, if you can get, I don't want to say this, but I think I have enough Power 9 that I feel okay with it. If you can get your hands on Power 9 right now, they are drying up. They are drying up right now. I, I don't see none of them come up. And, uh, and especially in, in Houston, there are just very few Power 9s on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. Even eBay, it's really dried up. And in my opinion, like when you buy Power 9, I would hope that you can meet the person... You have to look at the card in person because there's so a minor defect. Uh, you obviously have to confirm it's real. There have been multiple Black Lotus scams on eBay. And that's why I would not buy something. Now they have the eBay authentication. I, I did that with a, a few Wise cards recently and that seemed okay to me. Because they give you a little QR code or a little stamp on the bottom on the top of your card. So I think that's definitely much better than before. Uh, and you're not going to be scammed, right? Because you would send a Black Lotus off to eBay and not directly to the person. In the Black Lotus scam, if they had eBay authentication from the Nazi, right? The Nazi scammed an individual online. He sold them a real Black Lotus for only $10,000, which was really good price for the Black Lotus at the time. Even now, I think it was like 9000 and change. And then the Nazi had Daniel Chang from Vintage Magic confirm that it's a fake. And then he did a eBay refund, so he got to keep a real Black Lotus, and he got to keep his money to fund more Nazi operations, which is great. Yeah, definitely. It's that sarcasm, in case you want to clip it. That's sarcasm, guys. So that really took me off, like, buying shit on eBay. But the eBay authentication, probably not a bad idea. Probably not a bad idea at all. When you are dealing with Magic cards, they are incredibly valuable today. And I do believe that a lot of it is uh, due to influencers. What? Why did Magic the Gathering become so popular? Well, uh, it became really, really popular. Why did Pokemon become so popular? It was a dude, his name was Logan Paul. And this dude called Logan Paul wanted to know... Um, this guy wanted to pump up Pokemon and he had the Pikachu Illustrator. He had other places called Liquid Marketplace. Also, the same dude did the, what was it, the Crypto Zoo scam. With, and now he's suing another YouTuber, CoffeeZilla, for exposing the scam. Without influencers, your cards are not valuable. That's just how it is, right? That is, I, I wish I, it was something different. But there are many times that Pay Money Wubby is playing a card or opens a card and he says, oh, I love this card. And then suddenly the card sells out. 
It doesn't matter if it's a rare or even a common from unglued. As long as he likes the card, the card will be bought out because there's not that many, especially older cards. There's the, not that many older cards even for sale. So it doesn't take, you know, maybe it takes 100 people buying the card and now it's gone. And you know, the, the Clam Ambassador is a, an example of this. But you also see with uh, Commander, the Commander channel with uh, Joss and the other guy whose name I'm forgetting. They also, when they promote a card, often it does, or there's a really cool deck on their channel, boom, the card's gone. That's the power of influencers, right? Uh, the influencer doesn't really need to say very much. Uh, I'm reminded of like how the MTG finance people tried to become influencers, but none of them like got to the big enough. They never got like 10,000 plus subs, so they couldn't really manipulate the market. But when you have a million subscribers, four million subscribers, even if you're not trying to influence the market, you are. You are. And again, a lot of these cards are more vintage. I would I would feel very confident saying that in terms of people buying magic cards, the older reserve list cards, they're better today as money and as a quote hashtag investment hashtag not investment of ice than they were two weeks ago before penguin zero and and pay money while we really started doing collapse the the game has changed guys like we live in a society where influencers have all the control they play a deck on your favorite edh channel and then suddenly you want to go buy the deck and you realize oh there's the commander's gone now and there's some really interesting speculations in terms of um, if you're going to play a card that is very rare and it's not necessarily well known, then it would be very easy to buy out the card. And it would be very hard to replace the card at the, at the previous price, even if the card is uh, common. Right? There's just so much demand for it from all the players who want to, or many times, maybe the card is just open on camera and it's kind of a cool card. And the influencer is like, I like it. Without Logan Paul, I think Pokemon prices would probably be 25, 30% lower than they are right now. And you saw what happened without Logan Paul with the vintage stuff. The vintage stuff has completely just got demolished. Right? Logan Paul hasn't promoted Pokemon in some time. Now, what is going up is the vintage stuff. Volcanic Island Unlimited somehow is a $1,200 card. I, I remember buying this for like $500 and thinking it's a very dark card, very overprinted uh, ink card. And then Wheel of Fortune Beta. I mean, a lot of this stuff is just crazy hard to find right now because the stuff that the influencers want to promote is vintage. They're not going to promote like, you know, the newer stuff, guys. They're going to open vintage boxes. That's how Logan Paul did it. Anyway, let me know if you guys agree or disagree. Bye, guys.